Okay, this is a quick vid for my new HF Auto software that I've been developing. Down the bottom left of this recording you can see the front of my uh, Palstar HF Auto. And this software uh, connects up to it and allows you to control it. So, this is how it starts up and you obviously you can refresh the COM ports and pick the one that is uh, your Palstar. HF Auto and hit uh, connect and it will come up here and if you haven't got a suitable firmware it will come up with a warning you need 2.34 or later for this to work uh, properly so here we are here's some raw data that's coming in and it's just displayed there all the time you can obviously change uh, the modes by clicking on these buttons up here and change your antennas as well as you'd expect you can uh, press on mode here to just cycle round the modes which is exactly the same as pressing the mode button on the front of the uh, device itself and the same for antenna it will just cycle through the antennas like so you can go into setup as well on here so if you hit setup you actually see the setup here so power range a thousand watts and you can use the arrows just like you do on the on the front of it and you can hit the select again select is the same as pressing in the round dial the the knob on the front so you can uh, get through everything on here so uh, that's implemented as well and then you can just go back to auto like that. Uh, we have a TCPI, uh, sorry, a TCI link to Thetis. So Thetis will send down the frequency. You can uh, you can look at VFO A, VFO B, or if you're using 2.10.3.7, uh, one of the later test uh, RC3s, then you can also use TX, and it will follow whichever TX frequency you're on if you're doing splits or whatever it will auto track them and all that sort of stuff and of course you just put your the IP in which matches your Thetis uh, TCI server Let's just position this around here so if you go into setup and networking TCI server and you switch it on here that's what uh, that relates to and whenever a frequency comes down a frequency change is spotted for VFO A it will send that frequency to the tuner without having to auto uh, without having to put any RF out so we're on 7106 now and you can see it on the front of the tuner top right on the LCD and it's also here 7016 if we move frequency you'll see that it updates it updates after two seconds so you can be uh, dragging this around and it won't be doing anything if you keep dragging this around nothing will happen but as soon as you let go or you sit in the same place for two seconds it will get that update and the other thing that it can do, I'll just turn this feature off a minute and I'll talk to you about that in a second. If we go down to like 160 meters, you can see that it will uh, realize the frequency's changed and it will start uh, doing a non RF tune. And of course, if I was to hit tune here at 17 watts. Um, it's pretty much uh, close to where it should be and if I go down here you can see the uh, tuner automatically tracking it like so okay let's get back up to 80 there we go you can see all the bytes all the raw data that's changing and the capacitor values and all that sort of stuff so there's another button here as well TCI tune which um, literally sends a message over to the I'll show you that in a second <laughs> I got a sneak peek there because I forgot to turn off 
Um, show on TX. Uh, so TCI Tune here. If you use Tune on, on the software, it will light up over there as well. And if you use it here, um, it will control the software. So we can do a tune from here. And you can type in a frequency in Hertz in here as well and hit set frequency uh, if you want to use that uh, little box there. This checkbox here, send frequencies as a tuner, that ex does exactly what it says on the tin. If you uh, move somewhere else now, this will update this text box here. But nothing will get sent to the tuner, so it's entirely RF based now. So, you know, you, you'd click here and it would... Uh, it would retune there and likewise if I click down here it would uh, tune down there so it's doing that entirely through RF now with this turned on of course it um, knows what frequency sends that to the tuner and then the tuner moves to the nearest uh, recorded values you can also do things like if you put some RF out, uh, you get a little display here, has RF. And then you can use manual mode. And you get the capacitor and the inductor options here. You can switch between the two uh, by clicking on this. And you can see it changing on the LCD down the bottom left of the video. If we want to change the inductor, we can just hit on plus on here. And that will change the inductor values like so. And obviously the uh, SWR is changing. You can keep your mouse down on these buttons. And it will... Uh, apply the settings over and over. And you can go into a fine mode as well. Which will do little tiny adjustments. So that's that box. And of course just like the tuner you can only store when there's some power coming through it so if you were to if you were to have too low a uh, drive then the store light disables uh, so that's in there as well uh, what else can we talk about okay so the whole system will output UDP JSON data um, to Thetis and we can trap all that in here in the uh, I.O. stuff in Thetis uh, multimeter I.O. so if we clear all these variables and we now go somewhere you can see that um, if I turn that option on by ticking on that box there if I now go somewhere again to get an update uh, a whole bunch of uh, information gets sent across and you can use these variables to build a display similar to this one which I've built in Thetis which gives you um, a replica, well, a similar sort of display to the LCD which uh, of course you can't see, it's off the screen right now so there it is uh, we should put it down here. Let's get rid of these meters for now. And we'll put it down here. So yes, this is a uh, container based using all the variables. I can quickly show you it. Text overlay. This top one is showing that title. Then there's a splitter, which is this black line. Then there's text overlay, which is the mode description. So that's the manual bit there. So if I change mode, it will change in uh, in this view. Then there's another text overlay, which is the capacitor values and the inductor values there. Forward power meter, SWR meter down the bottom. Then I've got a little spacer as well to push that SWR meter off the off the bottom there. Then we've got another text overlay, which is the antenna selected. So that's been shifted up and across, which is that one. And then we've got... Um, display frequency which is this over here then we've got two interesting ones which you saw when I'm on manual so it's this flashing to show that it's in capacitor change mode and that's done by if the mode is 2 
which is uh, auto is 1, manual is 2, bypass is 3, so if the mode is 2 and the stepper motor selection is 1, this is stepper motor 1 is capacitor, stepper motor 2 is inductor, so that's now flashing that. If I was to click this now, it'll switch to the other one. And of course, um, you can uh, change this uh, just by clicking on here, you don't need to have RF out, and there you go, you can see it changing. Like so. So that's that's that, that's a quick overview of the front end. You've got uh, on top, uh, cross, top right, minimize, minimize the system tray, or you can have it start up in a system tray as well. The last thing to look at, um, is this thing under this co this this setting here? Let's get to buy here out of the way. And you saw it uh, change frequency there and did a bit. Uh, if we were to tune here now, we we're okay. Let's make sure this shows on transmit. Uh, that's okay. So 1.3 to 1, we've got there. We could go into manual and we could go uh, tweak this up a bit so at 1.0 to 1 and then we can hit store and then it will, you'll see its settings changed will have appeared on the LCD um, and that's stored it in there uh, the last thing as I say is this which brings up a whole uh, another system so if you've got, I've got a doublet which obviously I use for like 160, 80, 40 and 30 uh, meters. But I, I've got a, a hex beam as well and I don't need to send the, the frequency changes to the tuner when I'm on the hex beam frequency. So in here I can put anything above 14 meg. So that's... Uh, 14 with six zeros anything above 14 meg and below 60 meg say we won't send any updates uh, for uh, frequency so now if we go to 20 meters let's turn this on so that checkbox there turns this uh, um, frequency stuff on and it's linked to this checkbox here so if you turn this one off this one will turn off and if you turn that one on it'll turn on over there so this is just here for easy access um, so now if we jump to 20 meters frequency information will not be sent across so as you can see we're still on uh, F3784 uh, so no frequency info is getting across right now but of course if I was to hit um, uh, uh, put some power out here now because we're in auto it would tune which is not what we want to do as well for the hex beam we, we don't want to do that so we can say um, switch to a specific mode when we're on or above 14 meg so we'll just set the same data in one two three one two three uh, and so we'll say when we're on that in that range we'll go into bypass so if we hit ok now and we give it a frequency change just to get an update you can see it's automatically switched into bypass mode however if we jump down to 80 well there's no setting for 80 but what we can do we can do the whole range of the thing uh, 60 meg and we can say for the whole range we want to be on auto but we can give this one that we just entered a much higher priority so when we're in the 14 to 60 meg range it'll use bypass and the rest of the place it'll use auto so if you were to go down to 80 meter uh, hit ok on this and now go down to 80 it'll change to auto automatically without any RF going out over it or anything um, and we can go up to 20 and it'll switch to bypass and likewise we can also control the antenna 
selection like this. Um, standard on the HF Auto, you can choose your antenna by RF, so you can uh, turn auto antenna on, and then you can set up which ones you want bypassed, which ports you want to use, and all that sort of stuff. But you, with this system, with this program, you can do it without putting any RF out of there. So we'll add another entry from 14 meg to 60 meg. I want to use antenna port 2. But for the rest of the free, uh, rest of uh, everything, I want to use antenna port 1. 60, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I want to use antenna port 1, but as you can see, they're both on the same priority, so it would use the one that's first in the list, but it's best to give it a priority number. So, that's higher priority, it will use this over this. Um, so, if we hit OK on here, and we now go up to 20 meters, it'll switch to antenna 2 and bypass mode. And if we come down to 80 meters, we'll come back to antenna one and auto. So that's uh, that's all those settings there. There's a cut. There's one more setting here as well. If the SWR is detected by the software by the tuner and it's greater than three to one, automatically switch to auto if not already there. So it means that if you um, if you have that on and you go somewhere which isn't tuned at all and you don't have it in the right mode it will automatically flip to auto so there's that option as well uh, so there we are that is the piece of software uh, it's going to be freely available um, and I'll put it up on github at some point the source won't be made available though um, but uh, the, the program will and um, I'll probably be doing a few more updates uh, to it over the short term because it hasn't been tested really much other than what I've been using it uh, with and, and uh, developing it but it hasn't had any end user testing as such so uh, yeah that's it anyway alright cheers Oh, I forgot to add, I'll just come back at the end of the video, I forgot to add you can actually it mirrors everything on the on the um, device itself so if you were to press a button on here like uh, mode it automatically happens in the software um, it's fully uh, it's fully implemented like that even if you were to go into setup on here and then you were to move through with the dial uh, you see it appearing and if you change uh, setting on here you see it changing in the software as well and of course you can get out of setup by pressing this back button but you can also do it uh, in the software by pressing the back button um, oh yeah changing through the actual uh, options and you can just get out of setup by hitting auto or whatever so there we are that's it anyway okay cheers again